joining me this morning to talk tacos and so much more, CNN political commentator Bakari Sellers, Rachel Campos Duffy, who's the spokesperson for the conservative Libre Initiative, which targets Hispanic voters, CNN political analyst Kirsten Powers, and CNN political commentator Andre Bauer. Welcome, one and all. Thanks for being here. Rachel, I'm going to start with you. Taco trucks on every corner. What so the answer to your pressing question at the tease is delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> delicious. Um, we could use a few more of them up in northwestern Wisconsin where I live. Um, look, what I think is really interesting is that um, taco trucks really are the ultimate symbol of American um, uh, entrepreneurial capitalism. And I think what people want to know is not what, what some first time surrogate um, bungled. What they want to know about is who's going to help people who want to start taco trucks. And liberal policies have always overregulated food trucks. In fact, in, in Nevada, we have a former attorney general who was shutting down, who's running for Senate, by the way, who's shutting down Uber. What people want to know is who's going to help people start businesses, let them grow, become financially independent. Liberals overregulate these kind of small business owners, and conservatives um, help them achieve the American Excellent dream. pivot. Yeah. I have never seen spin like that. That was, <laughs> no. that was it, But it's true. I, it's I give true. you credit for it. I mean, what we do know is that Donald Trump gave a speech that was full of desperation despair uh, this past week, and we still don't know what he's going to do. I heard Rudy Giuliani on your show earlier today, and we still don't know what he's going to do with the 10 and a half million people who are here who are not criminals. Um, and so, yes, I think that the Republican Party has an awful brand when it comes to Hispanic Americans. Um, and I think that Donald Trump is just perpetuating many stereotypes uh, that are detrimental to Republicans ever growing their base. Let me ask you a question, because Kirsten, uh, Karen Tumulty uh, uh, tweeted out a story really interesting, uh, I think by Abby uh, Phillip, actually, that... Um, Hillary Clinton is actually doing worse with Latino voters now than she was a few weeks ago. According to an ABC News Washington Post poll, her favorability with Hispanics fell from 68% in July to 55% at the end of August. The story also says she's not doing particularly better with Latinos than other Democrats have done. Why not? Well, I, I don't know why not, but I, the, the most important thing is she's doing much, much better than Donald Trump. And that's, that's the bottom line. His approval rating is 21% in the same poll. So, you know, her approval rating, I'll take 55 over 21%. And I think that she, you know, in this article, they're talking about the fact that maybe she needs to be doing some more outreach, maybe needs to be running some more ads in the Latino community. But at the end of the day, he's underwater and she's Here's, above she water. Has, and she's had every advantage in the Latino community. And uh, Latino media, uh, Spanish language media, is is basically a, another wing of her party. Um, the reason she's doing bad is Hispanics leave countries um, where there is corruption um, uh, on the level that we're seeing right now with Hillary Clinton. Except I mean, this is a rigged... Well, I mean, but, what, no, hold on, hold on. Double digits. Well, saying, they're in double digits, but in the last month, as the scandals, as her scandals she, have, have increased, that's why we're but seeing she's this also, drop. I mean, but she she also hasn't spent any money, per se. And yeah. but neither I think we also saw the Barack no. Obama... Barack Obama didn't, he doesn't have the money to spend, but Barack Obama didn't spend the money until mid-September on Hispanic radio and, yeah. and Spanish television. I, I just, and I think yeah, I just happen. think it's very important to be clear. She's not doing badly she's among no, no, just Latino not voters. Better and, and, and she's, you know, she, in the USA Today poll, two-thirds of Latinos are voting for her. I mean, that, that's not doing badly. And, it, do you think this talk, um, taco trucks on every corner, as you say, it's a, it's a surrogate that very sure. few of us have ever heard of before, but, <laughs> but it does feed into kind of this 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 meme out there uh, about Donald Trump um, and I don't know that he did himself any favors with his speech the other night when it came to the Latino community no matter what Rudy Giuliani says was buried in that speech in terms of the the, the policy a lot of Latinos for Trump quit Latinos well, for Trump lot, after that Jake. speech only two only two that I know of um, that's still a that's a, still a, a pretty big group. When you have a group called Latinos for Trump and they leave Trump after his major speech on immigration. When you're a leader and you take a strong stand, you're not going to make everybody happy. Look, I thought he did an excellent job meeting with the president. It was open to both candidates. Only one showed up. He did a very good job. And I know there's controversy. Well, you know, he acted very differently at a different rally. Well, the president's going this week to the the G20 summit. He won't talk to that group like he would to the Democrat convention. So they're two different audiences, but you see the numbers changing. We're getting closer now. It's, it's almost an even race. Labor Day's around the corner. He said he was going to kick the campaign in in Labor Day. But the real message is here, look, I like the taco truck analogy. Those are people that are business owners. They're working hard. We just won't, don't want the people here that are stealing the hubcaps. Except he was saying <laughs> that we don't want taco trucks. But let's turn to Hillary Clinton because there is another candidate in the race. Take a listen to what Hillary Clinton has been saying over the past year about her emails. We turned over everything that was work-related, every single thing. Personal stuff, we did not. And all I can tell you is that I turned over every work-related email in 
uh, my possession. Okay. I've turned over everything. Let me just. We now know from the FBI that she did not, that there were 15,000 emails uh, that were work related that she no, did no, not. No, that's not, we don't know that. We know that there were 15,000 emails, uh, and we don't know what those emails are. We don't know if they're work related. We don't know if they're personal. We don't know if they're duplicates. The FBI that, says there were 14,300 or something that, like that that, that, they, that were work related. That they they're not can. sure if they were duplicates. That's true, that they're looking into them, but they say that they are work related. They said work and personal, I thought. But regardless, we, we stay down this rabbit hole and we chase this smoke where there's no fire. We, we, we do that, we, we have been doing that, this is we've been doing that with Hillary Clinton for a very long period of time. The, the most amazing thing is this week Hillary Clinton re released a comprehensive mental health proposal and we covered Anthony Weiner. Uh, you know, this week we... we Not we, irrelevant we, to the topic, we, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pivoting. <laughs> this is a pivot. But, we, but, but, to, but to actually to get on the issue, we know that Donald Trump actually had a foundation that was pay to play and we're back to emails. What we're talking about today with these emails, people are just sick and tired of, of chasing this smoke where there's there's no fire. What's interesting to me is that you just had Jeff Flake on. You just showed this commercial from uh, John McCain. You have people within the Republican Party and the conservative movement who are willing to look at a candidate and be really honest about what his flaws and what his strengths are. And it's so fascinating to me that on the Democrat side, you have this level of corruption. I mean, this is not a small thing. This is a, somebody who's taking a charity, using it as a front and That's a slush fund. Though. Yes, it absolutely That's is. That's not true. You yes, cannot it, say that a charity it absolutely who, is, who's but actually, you sit helped, here as a Democrat, who actually helped children get HIV and AIDS yeah, medication. And, and also helped Sidney Blumenthal get a job. But, but That's not job. part of but, the charity. But actually, tell me and, this. Tell me this. How, how much money has Hillary and Bill Clinton gotten from the Clinton Foundation? If it's a, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot. They've become millionaires off of this. They have not Let's become be, millionaires off the Clinton become, Foundation. We that's already absurd. Know. And you know why we know that's absurd? You because can, you she over... released her tax returns. That's how right. we know they received not a dollar from the Clinton Foundation. Which showed that she was making millions, millions, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, from, dollars from, 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 giving, speeches from giving speeches. To absolutely. people who have given to the foundation. That you will sit here and defend that. To me, just really... I will really... defend the Clinton Foundation until I'm blue in the face. Let's, I want to bring you in here, Kirsten, because you, you, you have been a Democrat who's been willing to criticize Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton. And what yeah. do you make of what happened? Uh, look, on, on the foundation, I just don't see this pay-to-play argument. I, it's, it's not... First of all, they don't receive any money. They don't make money off of the foundation. They don't receive salaries from it. So they're actually not making money off of the foundation. It's also been rated by the people who rate the charities. The people who as, rate the as, charity as, refuse to rate it not, anymore because they did, not they they did, they they did until this last week. Yeah. And this well, week, this week they did yeah. give it an so A rating. It's rated by the people who, as, with an A rating. So I, I think the foundation stuff is, is being blown out of proportion. The emails, however, on the other hand, I think has become something that most a lot of people are concerned about. And I think it has affected her trust numbers, and deserved, deservedly so, and she has said so herself. Andre, I'll, give you, the, I'll give you the last word here. A lot of Democrats feel that these numbers are, the, 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 the distrust stuff is already baked into these numbers, though. Well, the distrust, you're seeing the numbers continue to drop, and nothing's ever going to happen. 228 people within the Department of Justice have given to her campaign, so you know that nothing's going to happen. But again, it just reinforces, if you wonder why you can't get her anywhere to interview her, she don't want to have to lie anymore. It's cover up, cover up, cover up, and we're seeing the numbers reinforced by the voters not trusting her. Before we go, sure. congratulations on your eighth baby in the christening. It's, 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 it's very much. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I'm going to single-handedly solve this band on the conservative side. If you're wondering why the poll numbers are getting close in Wisconsin, <laughs> it's Rachel right there.